was a director in the company that provided electronic security for the World Trade Center and Washington's Dulles Airport, both involved in September 11th? None other than the president's younger brother. From 1996 to 2000, SecureCom installed what was referred to as a new security system at the World Trade Center. Wirt D. Walker III, a cousin of the Bush brothers, was CEO of SecureCom from 1999 until 2002. Interestingly, these facts have not been made public. Was it only a security system that was added during those years? Or was it also the wiring for a long-awaited plan? Scott Forbes, an IT specialist in a firm that had leased space in the South Tower since its erection, reported an unprecedented power down in his building for almost the whole weekend prior to 9-11. We were notified three weeks in advance of the power down by the Port Authority. That was relatively short notice to plan to shut down all of our banking systems. It was a big deal. It was, a, it was unprecedented. We had a data center on the 97th floor. So our originating servers were all there. During that weekend, the power down meant that there was no security. Uh, the doors were all open, basically. And also the security video cameras were all off. But they were guys in overalls carrying huge toolboxes and reels of cables walking around the building on that weekend. Employees were notified that internet cables were being upgraded. But who were the strange workmen, and what were they really doing? All the power was shut down. If there was a power down, that meant that everything was uh, gone in terms of uh, security, in terms of uh, access to the building. So anybody could have gone there and do any kind of uh, setup. Having worked overtime to get his company's servers back up, Scott took the day off on September 11th. As he watched the towers collapse from New Jersey that morning, he was sure this had been the purpose of the mysterious weekend work. Scott notified many authorities, including the 9-11 Commission, about the unusual and lengthy power outage, but was ignored. Ben Fountain of Fireman's Fund spoke of unusual evacuations ordered at the Twin Towers during the weeks before September 11th. Others reported that the security alert was inexplicably lifted five days prior and bomb-sniffing dogs were removed. What would the dogs have discovered had they remained on duty? Although they were idolized as cathedral-like symbols of power and triumph that pierced the New York skyline, the Twin Towers were big money losers for the Port Authority of New York. They cost millions a year to equip with the basics, electricity, water, heat, air conditioning, sewage, and even oxygen, being airtight. As modern communications connected traders from all corners of the globe, tenancy in the Twin Towers continued to drop. The towers presented another problem. Decades ago, their steel beams had been sprayed with fireproof asbestos, a cancer-causing material banned from use in building in the mid-1980s. Although the World Trade Center complex was given several waivers, it was expected to clean up its act. But to remove the asbestos from every supporting beam in the Twin Towers would have been almost undoable. Quotes for this cleanup ran over a billion, and no insurance company was willing to bear the cost. An urban renewal project of unfathomable proportions. Given the Towers' issues and problems, September 11th proved an unexpected bonanza. The Trade Center was built in the 1960s to revive a rundown area of New York, and 40 years later, urban renewal could again take place. Two white elephants were removed, and a brand new complex is in the works. As last survivor William Rodriguez climbed the stairwell to rescue people, he remembers a very strange thing. As I stood there on the 33rd floor, I heard very strange noises on the 34th floor. 
Now, the 34th floor was an empty floor, a floor that did not have any kind of uh, walls or it was a construction uh, uh, floor. It was totally hollowed out. There was nothing there, and I heard very heavy equipment being moved around, and it sounded like uh, dumpsters with uh, uh, metal wheels being moved around, and I got scared because I knew it was an empty floor. Nobody was supposed to be there. As a matter of fact, not even the elevators stopped there. You have to have a special access key to open the door on the 34th floor. So to find that there were strange noises there, and I continue actually bypassing that floor because I didn't dare to open the door on the 34th floor. Something told William Rodriguez not to mess with the 34th floor. I got scared. Yet William Rodriguez was not a man who was scared that day. He remained in a burning building against firemen's orders, endangering his own life as he saved the lives of others. What could have been happening on the 34th floor? For weeks, Scott Forbes had heard similar noises on the 98th floor above him. It must have been at least um, four to six weeks before 9-11. It, it was like rebuilding work going on upstairs. The tenants, the people from Aeon who had been there were moved somewhere else. The offices were just vacant. And there was a lot of heavy machinery building work going on. It was almost like pneumatic drills and lots of hammering. So much so that the floors were shaking. That's how noticeable it was. It was almost as if uh, something heavy was being moved and then it was being taken off wheels and it was like boom. Our floor underneath literally shook. You could feel the weight above you. That was how large it was. On one occasion, I opened the door to see what was going on being nosy. When I opened the door, the whole office space was empty. There was nothing there at all. It was quite bizarre because it was just empty. Completely empty, barren, nothing, zero. Not even cable tangling from the ceiling, but there'd been these heavy noises and vibrations up above. It was really strange. And the noticeable dust in the building the week before. It was probably the week leading up to 9-11. Every morning I'd come in around 7 a.m. and the dust was incredible. It was filthy. It was like the cleaners weren't cleaning. Right where the windows were, there was a sill which enclosed radiators. I was sick to death of the dust which was appearing on the window sills. It was um, dirty gray. And very, very noticeable in that week leading up to 9-11. Where was that dust coming from? Grey dust Scott himself had to clean. Was it powdered cement? The steel columns of the Twin Towers formed an endo and exoskeleton. Had something been placed around the edge of the building, holes been drilled to contain it? Was the dust in those final days a telltale sign? As white elephants, the buildings were full of vacant offices. Tenants could be temporarily moved around for upgrades as Aeon was, and a plan arranged to perfection. Was the strange construction that could be heard but not seen going on all over the towers? Larry Silverstein took possession six weeks before September 11th, when the strange construction began. Were the sounds that scared William Rodriguez the last of the rats as they left a sinking ship? 